So what I'm here to talk about today, essentially, is the area of how can we get better at communicating with communities. So communication is very much my, my profession, my area. Uh, I tend to spend most of my time in the energy profession. So we look at getting uh, extensions to oil and gas fields. We could putting in pipelines. It could be refineries. It could be these, those huge uh, liquid national, uh, natural gas uh, projects you've heard of that go on the coasts. Uh, it could also be solar panels of uh, side of those, uh, those areas, but also wind farms. And uh, unless you've worked on a wind farm, everybody loves wind farms and the idea of wind energy unless it's near them. And then they're not quite so keen. So what I want to look at today is how are communi communities uh, reacting to your area, my area, but lots of other organizations which have trouble with trust these days. Uh, some folks ask me, are communities, are, are the public, are they any angrier than they were today, let me say, than say 20 years ago? I don't believe that's the case. I think folks are just folks, and they're gonna be the same all the time. And they, they look at what's in their best uh, natural interests, and they're gonna defend those the way we would too. What has changed significantly is the amount of effort and the amount of technique that there are available to, for folks to actually express themselves when they are upset. You've got social media, haven't you? You've got social media, you've got uh, websites. You know, one person with their cat in a basement can look like a, an army of a million out there uh, if they want to protest a project of some way. So uh, one of the things that, that I look to do with, with the, the folks that I work with is find out why is that and what can we do as an organization to change that? So organizations, while, while communities and, and the public are getting, in many ways, much more sophisticated, I'm going to say that organizations are more or less getting, getting less sophisticated and less good at doing this. Now, a couple of reasons for that. So, what happens in organizations is that you're, you get cutbacks for time. Uh, there's, there's people with checklists wanting to know if you've finished your, your work. The consultation is part of that spreadsheet. They want to get it done. They want to get it done right now. And uh, it's, it's pretty tough to do that. There's a constraint on everybody's time. There's a constraint on training. Though not everybody has had the, the, the training. Uh, and, and not everybody's had the, the chance to go through some of those, those very powerful empathy courses. So what we need to do is we need to change some of that and see if we, we can get that, that element of trust back into, into those communities. Now, what works very well, I found, is not getting into trouble in the first place. And that's a program that we look to, to use called Neighbor of Choice. Like, How can you be the welcome neighbor? Even though they, they may not love the project that you're doing or the area that you're working in or what you're bringing into the community. Can you connect in some other way with that group? And I believe you can. Now, I've seen projects go really well, whereby it, uh, it, it, there's been no particular issue whatsoever, but it's been a, a pretty difficult uh, maybe, uh, project to get off the books in terms of regulation. But when, when we get them into the areas, it can go very well indeed with a neighbor of choice idea. Let me give you an example of neighbor of choice uh, ideas in the world of energy. So if you're doing a, a big uh, oil and gas field and say you have a whole bunch of, of uh, uh, new projects coming in, you've got new equipment coming through, and you've got uh, operators who are, who are going around the area, you tell the operators, if you see a car in distress, st stop and see what's, what's going on there. Can you help them in some way? Can you, if they're running out of gasoline, can you go and get, get some gasoline for them? Can you, if they're having a med medical emergency, can you help them in some way by, by, by showing some skills there or getting on the phone and bringing more, more folks in. One of the, the best issues I ever saw was whenever people were having a, 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 the worst possible thing you can have in a farm, you know, they had a fire in a barn. And we had this organization that had all the firefighting equipment in this big facility, and rather than wait for the fire truck to come from 20 miles away, they said, get your gear on, get in the trucks, get out there across the prairie, and put that fire out. 
And that was a, a, a tremendous connection to that community. It's pretty hard to be mad at people who you, you may not like their project, but when they put the fire right in, in a barn, that's pretty good stuff. You're, kind of, you're okay, okay with that. So some of the things that, that we want to do with, with Neighbor of Choice is, uh, in, in the police areas, what, that, what could that possibly be? So Neighbor of Choice for policing could be getting out of your car, going and chatting to folks, going up on the porch, uh, giving your name, giving out your card with your number on it, suggesting that, that we can have a chat about what's going on in the area. There's a whole bunch of things that, that could work that way. You might freak people out the first time, maybe the second time, but after a while you get known as the people who are there just looking to, to solve some issues and try and get to know better the folks in the community. But that works pretty well whenever uh, you've got the, the neighbor of choice idea going well and pe people are, are warm to it. But what happens if they get really upset? And if, if you get people who, who are going uh, much more angry than uh, the neighbor of choice can deal with. And, and we know that can happen. And that often happens when something else happens to the, to the, uh, the folks who are upset. And you get these things called special interest groups, SIGs. So as special interest groups come in and they, and they, they come in at, at, the, uh, at the side of, of, of a dispute and they can amplify it. And special interest groups, um, I don't believe that they are the actual, the, the heart of the problem. Some folks think that they are the heart of the problem. I think what they really are is that they're the amplification of the problem. And they just make the problem louder and louder and they get way more attention to the problem. So what can we do about that? Well, special interest groups, first of all, I think you need to embrace them. And, and that, that's the core of my message for you today is we need to embrace the folks who are the angriest. And that can be, that can be pretty hard to do. You go, I don't really want to do that. It doesn't feel very good to do that. But it's, it's, in, it's in doing that that we can get the conversations going. And we need to get the conversations going to move things forward. So, <clears throat> It's tough to do with, deal with uh, special interest groups because their role, and I've been in mediation areas whereby the, the role of, of the special interest group, and I've discovered, is to shine a light on one particular thing. So they're not there to find the solution. Folks like ourselves, we're there to get the solution. We, we, we're responsible. We have to show up, and we're paid to show up to get the solution. They're not there to get the solution. They're there to shine the light. And they say, it's up to somebody else to get the solution. We're light shiners. Now, that can be tough to take sometimes, and you, you, know, you don't want to hear that, but that's what we're, we're, we're kind of faced with. That's, that's what you have to do. So if you're a special interest group, uh, there's a whole range of folks there. So there's the, the, on the scale of 1 to 10, 10 being high. So the 10s are the folks who might be out there, and they're so upset that they're, they're throwing stones. They're in the right, they've got their right gear on, they've got the mask up, and they're going to lob a stone over, the, over, the, uh, over, the, over your head, perhaps. So what do we do with, with, with those folks? Well, they're, they're, they're the, the tens. They're going to be pretty tough to talk to in the moment. But there's a whole bunch of folks behind them. So maybe the nines are sorting out the stones. Maybe the eights are preparing sandwiches for the people who are, who are throwing the stones. But there, there's, the, there's the sevens, sixes, fives, fours. Those are folks that you can really interact with. And what we need to do is to, is to get them off their position, which is we don't want you or we don't want the thing in our community, off the position and onto their interests. We've got to figure out what their interests are. And that's really the essence of the whole mediation uh, approach. How do, we, how do we possibly do that? And I think if you can, if you can embrace that and, you, and if you can uh, see the, the value in that, uh, and I, I love the value of this because when I'm working in these areas, what I, I like to do is I like to think of it as pulling a thread. So you're trying to pull this thread, and you have no idea where this thread's going to go. It could go absolutely anywhere. And it's exciting to do that. And you, I've only seen better results come through from all that. So when people get really, really bent out of shape, what, what they tend to do, the reasons for that tend to be, uh, there's three things in particular. Uh, lack of respect, as they view it. This is all as they view it. Lack of respect, lack of honesty, and lack of compassion. So those, those are the three things that tend to bend people particularly out of shape. And that, whatever, whatever they're feeling, on even that number 10 with the stone in their hand, I find that whatever they're doing makes complete sense 
in their head at that time. It makes complete sense to them. And it's beholden on us to try and put ourselves in their shoes and think, if I was them, how would I see the world? Would I see it much differently from the way they're seeing it? And how would I react? And if you're you're not going to be able to to chat to that 10 in that moment, but what's really important is to be seen to want to chat to the 10. You've got to genuinely want to talk to them because all the other folks in that spectrum, all the way down from the 10 down to the 1, they're all watching what you're doing. And if you're not prepared to engage with the people who are the angriest, who very possibly have some really important truth that's in there, buried in there somewhere, that we could all learn from, if you're not prepared to do that, then you will lose the respect of the people down the line from them. And and, and those are the folks you need to win. Because remember, the tens only exist to amplify. That's all they can do. But if, if 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 there wasn't a problem there in some way, they wouldn't be able to amplify anything. So worth bearing that in mind. And don't expect folks to be reasonable. We're supposed to be reasonable. Their their job is to shine the light, and it's incumbent on us to be reasonable. So hurt, understood, and tweak. And if they're mad at you, well, they're they're mad at life. So we know what the SIGs are, but what we want to do is get these these folks off off their position and onto the interest. So an interest in, in my neck of the woods could well be, say it's a pipelining project and folks don't want the pipeline going through. Well, you gotta ask them, why? Why the no? And then when you ask the questions, then you start getting the interest coming back. So it could be, don't want the pipeline going through because I love that group of trees there and I know that you're gonna have to rip those out and put your pipeline in and that's the last thing I want. I moved here for this amazing view and I really need this this view, so no to whatever you're, you're suggesting. So the interest in is the trees, it's the view. And when you know that, then you can, you can do some, some work with that. So in a genuine way, you can suggest, could we have a conversation? Would it be OK if you time to have a conversation with me about the, the trees and the view? Because you know, I think when we could take them out by hand, put them to the side, put the line in, put them back in there, maybe put even, even some other trees in there and make the, make the place even nicer than what you were thinking. And when you get that sort of a conversation going, then of course the, the whole thing changes a bit and people say, well, I don't think you can. And you say, well, I'd love to try. Could we have the conversation? You go, well, okay, let's, let's have, a, have a look at that. So that's a way of, of moving folks through. Uh, when it goes really off the rails, one, one, of, the, one of the most uh, um, uh, interesting stories I ever heard of was the, of the, the DuPont family. You're very familiar with the, the DuPont uh, company. It's a m- mega company nowadays. Paints, plastics, electronics, safety gear, all sorts of wonderful things come out of DuPont. But as many of you will know, the DuPont company made their initial money and their, and their reputation out of dynamite. And uh, when, back in the day when they were doing the dynamite factories, uh, that wasn't a great place to work. Those things blew up. And it was very tough to be able to cite a dynamite factory in the community because people had heard the news and said, we don't want one of those things near us, not in any way. So how do you break that down? So one, one way through that was that a Pont family said, we've got to get way better at safety. We've got to take it on. We've got to own safety. Otherwise, nobody's going to work here and we'll have no place for factories. So what did they do? They said, a member of our family or, or whoever's running the, 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 the facility, will live with their family right inside the dynamite factory. And if they ever move out, dynamite production will stop, all the workers will leave, and when they move back, we'll start producing dynamite again. And they never had a problem with another factory after they did that. So that, that, they figure out the position and the interest uh, pretty easily there. So what I would suggest to you uh, in in terms of wrapping it up would be, uh, number one, don't be ticking folks off if you can avoid it. That's that's, that's number one. But look to make it a culture. The companies that I see, the organizations that I see that that, that manage to do that, to to have a good relationship, it's part of the culture. And there's ways of doing that. They they hire locally where where possible. When they don't hire locally, they'll, they'll let their folks off and they'll let them go and coach locally. 
So they're, they're, they've got a connection to the community. If you can get the managers living as close as possible to the facility, that's a very powerful statement. So you know, you have, how, you know how, how safe is this, is this facility? Well, I live closer than anybody else, so I think it's pretty safe. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, and neither would my family. So that's kind of like a, a revelation moment. Um, certainly, it was, uh, the late Stephen Covey, I, I, I believe, once said, you, you, you can't talk your way out of something that you behaved your way into. So of course, having the behavior right is what it's all about. And if you're in trouble, then behave your way out of the trouble. That's what connects with communities in, in, in a great way. Uh, what I believe is that you've got to, we, it's our job, because we have to lead. Somebody's got to lead these difficult conversations, and they are difficult conversations, and somebody has to be there leading them. And that's got to be us. It will not be the folks on the spectrum. It won't be the nines and the tens. It'll, it'll be us. Otherwise, there will be no leading. So, so somebody's got to lead the whole thing, and when, you, when you're leading, they get to go first. That can be very tough because there's no, there's no fun win in that. You don't, you don't get to, to bring in your, your uh, folks who have got uh, PhDs in engineering and tell some community how wrong they are, which can feel very good for a nanosecond until you realize that you've just ticked them all off again and you need their permission to have social license to work in the area, so that's not so good. So what you need to do is, is to earn permission. They get to go first and you, can, you need to get their permission to say your bit and your bit comes after their bit, and it can be frustrating, and it's the only way they will listen to you. Because if you, if you try to tell them your, your story first, not interested. They've got to get their vent out. It's an anger ramp, and as we all know that anger is a secondary emotion. So anger, people aren't angry for the sake of being angry. It can sometimes seem that they are, but they're not. Anger gets you things, and that's why we're angry. And you want to catch them before they get on that ramp. Uh, either, uh, if you can't catch them before they get on the ramp, then you want to shorten the anger ramp and, uh, and look for, look for uh, the chance to explain to them after the anger ramp when they're, when they're calmed down. And finally, I would say that it reminds me of that, that old uh, commercial, you know, for the cough mixture, you know, Buckley's cough mixture. It tastes awful and it works. So what I would suggest to you is it, it, it may leave a poor taste in your mouth, but if you, if, you, if you do it, if you embrace the community, if you look at them as the obstacle that you must get through in order to have the, the connections, the relationships that you want, if you do all that, then you'll have uh, much better success and, and much more fun during doing the work. Thanks very much indeed.